Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at X01 on the Series X and Series S. A surreal gravity based exploration adventure, is this one worthy of your time or should you be finding your sci-fi kicks elsewhere? Well hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family and let's get started. So story, and I'm not going to be giving too much away, really keeps the game engaging the way it's kind of delivered and revealing too much it simply takes away the power of the game. So I'm going to be sticking to the store description. Now on the anniversary of the Jupiter disaster, an alien signal it transmits construction blueprints for an alien craft that is the title X01. Humanity of course builds it and you'll use it to follow up on what is a strange signal and alien craft. The pacing is definitely slow though, it drip feeds information to the player during missions and with small amounts of text between them, but it has just enough to keep the intrigue high. Really enjoyed it, it's confident in its approach here and you can absolutely feel that. So gameplay on the X01, it's a unique spaceship if ever I've seen one, a ball essentially that can control gravitational pull to push you downwards before you release it, let's say on an upward slope to slingshot into the sky. It's incredibly satisfying though once you get the controls down, but expect to be getting to grips with them initially. Also, the more you like progress, the more impressive the maneuvers you will be pulling off. The game is really about though mastering what is a simplistic mechanic that provides an incredibly satisfying response and that's reflected in these controls. Now the left stick it moves you in either ball mode or spaceship mode, the right trigger dials up that gravitational pull downwards and then holding the left trigger you will flatten out representing something more akin to what would be you know a typical spaceship. This is known though as gliding. There's a few other tricks then, holding both triggers allows you to dive in the sky and then the A button allows you to jump. The reason for gravity's part in this though, that's all you have, the ship's natural pull. There's no engines as such and while you may be soaring or breaking sound barriers in the sky, do know here quickly that glow at the back of your ship will disappear and the ship will return to ball form. Here you'll quickly be plummeting back to the alien planet. It strikes this fantastic balance between relaxed and almost stress-free as you know you're flying through the air, to intense as you figure out that next move. The trick here, use gravity on a downslope, remove on the up, fly at the jump, it is so very cool. There's no real way to fail though, no death, you can restart the level if you do find you're lost and I did do that myself a couple of times. But yeah, no mistakes, just kind of, you know, getting into the flow of jump, flight, jump, flight. It's incredibly satisfying, even exciting and there's a part of me that absolutely now intends to return to master these manoeuvres even further. I just kind of want to see what I'm capable of. Honestly as well, I go off track quite a lot with the missions at hand here because I saw a potential opportunity for new heights and I couldn't help but explore. Outside of the controls and the other mechanics that are really going to impact your movement then, it's going to be the environment, you know, some early examples, gusts of wind, almost tornado-like forms, uh, alien architecture that can like fire you through the sky, clouds, lava, a whole lot more. I'm confident in saying in these sandbox locations, there's still things for me to uncover as well. The game's aim then is perhaps what might lose players the most, it's not bad, it just lacks any real direction, more like a puzzle experience, it drops you into these locations and basically says go figure it out. It's not bad though, it never got me stuck personally, you just need to look for very clear objectives that maybe stand out in these environments, for the most part they're beacons of light. There's no map though or clear, you know, objective A, B and C steps, but that's absolutely fine, it's definitely more about the journey than anything else. The game understands that though and it does a perfect job of it, you know, the real drive for that player as I said it's a journey and that story slowly being pieced together, not once did I get bored with the movement, I was just excited to move on and see what the next landscape provided as kind of my playground. My two favourites, the lava shooting into the sky acting as a launch pad and then the ability to submerge yourself into the water and often the pitch black of it. Problems for gameplay? Very few honestly, there's a couple of missions they feel like maybe they get a little too clever for their own good, almost turning into very minor platforming moments, it just slows down your pace though as you're trying to figure out how you're going to do it. Then the game is also relatively brief, it took me personally about two and a half hours, so that may be an issue for some. Then finally the camera at times, there's a couple of levels that were just weaker in their design where it works within kind of a confined space. But of course it leads to quite a bit of clipping and so on, it can definitely send the camera just a little bit crazy. 
These confined spaces as well, I will say that was the weakest of the bunch in regards to the level design. It feels just minor being almost claustrophobically packed in. I don't know why you would do that. You compare it to the open world and they're not even close to being of that quality. For gameplay though, XO1 it really stands out, I haven't played anything quite like it and its confidence in its simple control scheme leads to a sense of freedom meaning you're only restricted by your ability and not what the game tells you you can do and that is very very rare. The scenery it's been expertly crafted though to keep you within the confines of its world and that takes some serious skill but it also makes me want to now see how far I can push things. And yeah, basically tell me that's not cool. Natural curiosity is such a powerful thing, and XO1 absolutely understands that. So graphically speaking, XO1 it definitely matches the simplistic gameplay with relatively simplistic visuals, not that they aren't, you know, not stunning. You got these big wide open spaces, they're very good at giving you a sense of scale and just how small you are in this world. Each planet is varied enough as well that very few feel the same outside of a quick repeat that makes absolute sense. The ship is extremely basic looking as well, a bore to a flat structure, but I love the animation and the use of colour to signify speed, you know, you've got that orange glow at the back of the ship showing how fast you're going, you got filters over the screen showing how fast you're going, and occasionally that orange glow will fade and that means you're about to drop from the sky. The landscapes in a stunning desert's greenery, watery planets that give you that kind of interstellar vibe. Nothing's flat either, mountains, sand dunes, water to dive into. It's all got some like great texture work as well throughout. It's basically designed very specifically around your ship's mechanics, but it never feels too far fetched or removed from reality to be, you know, unrealistic. It's all topped off then with some great particle effects and weather work throughout. The only issue, minor clipping to the third person viewpoint, you can get a little lost at times with your direction but that's more a restriction of the setup than the graphics directly. Audio finally and minimal sound effects fill these landscapes, but there's always something. The music is stunning as well. It's very relaxed, but it does know when to dial up the tension and the flight has some great effects as well. Not a lot I can add honestly, the music is the star of the show and everything else feels a little alien which is exactly what you want. There's especially then some winning flashback style moments that I definitely won't spoil. So the final verdict an X01 is a welcome addition to the Series S and X. While I don't think visually it's pushing the boundaries of the power of these machines, it's definitely bringing something that stands out with a unique control scheme and a design that latches onto your curiosity. Once you get your head around the mechanics as well, it's just great fun, balancing moments of somber, exciting and intense to great effect. It has some shortcomings, sure, a short runtime, a few locations that don't quite work as well, and the camera that can get a little bit crazy, but that is me being picky. I absolutely want to go back now, I want to see what I missed and I want to go into its, you know, minimalistic style story with more knowledge and see what I may notice this time around. I strongly suggest you do too, you will not regret your time with this Games 11 missions. A great 8 out of 10 from me then, for a single dev team this is seriously impressive. Now will you be adding X01 to the library then, what do you think about the concept and the style of exploration? With that then look hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.